Good morning, Ambassador. Good morning to everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for joining this webinar this morning as well. So now uh, we, we have everybody on, uh, on this webinar, so we are ready to start. Thank you very much, uh, you know, for the uh, excellencies and distinguished guests for joining us. Uh, you know, in this webinar and this opportunity that we have now due to the current pandemic and, uh, you know, this situation, as, as we were talking before, we, we were trying to organize this uh, mission to Pakistan since, uh, well, 1st October, then March, and then, well, due to this situation, we are now, the, uh, you know, doing this webinar in order to facilitate this, uh, you know, exchange between Italy and Pakistan in this potential sector as it is, you know, dairy and livestock. So we already organize uh, many activities, even we host some, uh, you know, Pakistan entrepreneurs uh, here uh, in Italy uh, in order to explore these opportunities. And now we are doing this webinar in order to present, uh, you know, these opportunities for both, you know, from uh, the Italian side in order to provide technology, you know, how um, best practice and also for Pakistan uh, in order to, you know, take profit of this uh, potentiality and then that's why we have in this opportunity, uh, you know, uh, many uh, representatives, uh, stakeholders in these sectors. Uh, so I really would like to thank the Embassy of Pakistan, you know, who has worked with us during these last months, even the Italian Development Cooperation. Uh, Mrs. Benini is also here present, who coordinated also with us uh, many activities. Um, just uh, want to go quickly, you know, to the open remarks. So I give the floor to Mrs. Diana Batalla, that is the director of uh, Unido ITPO Italy. Diana, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, <laughs> let me first thank to the government of Pakistan and Embassy here in Rome for supporting us to organize this webinar. In the last few months, uh, we have seen how much the coronavirus has changed our personal and professional lives. Today, we are here together with many Italian companies connected from different regions of Italy to present and highlight the business and investment opportunity to, that Pakistan has to offer, especially in livestock and dairy industry. Pakistan ranked among the top five milk producing country in the world. Milk plays a strategic role in the local economy and the dairy livestock sector strongly contributes to Pakistan's GDP. However, Pakistan has not been able to make an efficient use of such resources due to different factors losses in production, shortage of know-how, and technology in milk, yield, and processing, limited initiatives and integrations with local supply chains, lack of packaging and branding expertise, and inability to explore export markets, among others. Against the, this background, Unido ATPO Italy has been developing a series of activities with the aim to foster the development of Pakistani SMEs in the field. Last year, we organized a study tour in Italy with Ozolia in order to share Italian best practices that can be replicated in the Pakistani market and to facilitate contact with the Italian entrepreneurs for potential businesses partnership. Unito ATPO Italy acts an honest broker in connecting local and foreign entities in the field of business investment and, and uh, trade promotion, also providing technological upgrade on the job training for entrepreneurial growth. In order to enhance sustainable industrial productivity in developing countries toward the achievement of the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals, we need to mobilize 
business investments, new technologies, and managerial know-how. In this sense, our Italian enterprises can offer the best innovation in a wide range of sectors and match the needs of Pakistani companies. Pakistan is a strong and large consumer market with over 200 million inhabitants, placed at a strategically close road in Central Asia. From the starting point, may we continue to work together in the evaluation and identification of specific trade networks, economic partnership, and joint venture between our countries. I sincerely hope that this webinar will provide a clear overview of the opportunities offered by Pakistan in the livestock and dairy industry. Thank you again, and uh, thank you for your presence. It's a very, very strong opportunity to meet you in this moment, and now, his Excellency, Bihar Salem, Ambassador of Pakistan to Italy, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Thank you, Excellencies, uh, dear friends, colleagues. Uh, very good morning to all the participants. I would like to again thank you all for making this webinar possible. Um, as we all know, Pakistan is focusing on improving its investment regime by undertaking ease of business reforms. Uh, we have improved actually 28 positions in the latest ease of doing business index of the World Bank. That is quite an evidence that we are trying to create an enabling environment um, for the foreign and local investors in all areas, particularly in this field uh, of dairy production, where it has been very rightly pointed out that Pakistan is the fifth largest producer in the world. World Bank included Pakistan amongst the top 10 improvers, performers in the ease of doing business reforms in 2020, this year that is. We also improved 58 positions on World Bank's indicator of starting a business. Now, these are all very encouraging developments for our Italian investors who are exploring the possibilities of working in Pakistan. And I'm sure that you know the, the, the Italian investors and businessmen, um, they're looking at all these indicators. That is why this year, despite the ongoing COVID pandemic, which has, as we all know, which has really um, destabilized business conditions everywhere, despite that, the Italian FDI to Pakistan increased by 15%. Um, however, having said that, the dairy sector in Pakistan is still one of those untapped uh, potentials yet uh, because the Italian investment in Pakistan so far is concentrated in energy, textiles, chemicals, and pharmaceuticals, amongst others. Pakistan's dairy sector is unique in many ways. Um, of course, we are the fifth largest milk producer. Um, but Pakistan is also the seventh largest consumer of milk in the world with a population of 220 million. So, 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 so you know, that, that's quite a significant market. Then again, Pakistan is a country with a very growing population, a very young population, rising incomes, increasing urbanization, an emerging middle class, and a predominance of lecto meat dietary pattern. Demand for milk and meat, meat products, therefore, is steadily increasing in the country. There's another angle here which I could mention. Dairy and livestock employ the highest number of women workers in Pakistan. So developing these sectors would have a very positive impact on women empowerment and the economic uplift in Pakistan. Dear friends, let me also inform you that Pakistan and Italy have a joint economic commission where we have cooperation programs of mutual interest in many, many areas. This year, later this year, we're planning to have this joint economic commission session in collaboration with my, uh, my, my, my counterpart, 
different uh, Italian ambassador in Pakistan. Uh, and we are planning to include the dairy sector as an area where both countries can also cooperate. So, so we will try to institute a, it as an agenda item there. Now we understand that Italy is a leading player in the global dairy market. And there's hardly anyone in the world, um, you know, like uh, who could sort of, okay, there are countries as good as Italy, but you know, like uh, not many which would claim to be better, um, you know, than Italy in terms of uh, the cheese that you produce, the state of art machinery, your dairy products and process development is outstanding. I personally appreciate your marketing and branding techniques uh, in that, this particular sector as well. So I believe that Pakistan, Pakistani uh, businessmen, Pakistani entrepreneurs in this sector has a lot to learn from your experience. Particularly in terms of enhancing the genetic potential of animals and feeding practices for production. I wouldn't be um, too long, you know, basically these are just introductory remarks. So I wish everybody um, an excellent uh, and productive discussion. And ho I hope that the presentations and deliberations uh, in this webinar will cover many of the important aspects and opportunities in dairy and livestock for both the countries. And inshallah, we'll have a very useful exchange of views today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, His Excellency, uh, and then Mr. Uh, Andreas Ferrarese, the Italian ambassador to Pakistan, uh, you have the floor. The microphone is on mute. Okay, now? Yes. 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 Now it's Let me think first of we need uh, for the organization of this web webinar and thank all Italian and Pakistani who are connected from different regions in Italy and Pakistan this morning. As you know, Pakistan has a lot to offer in terms of business and investment opportunities for Italian companies. This webinar is one of the last and promising activities of the Italian development operation carried out through UNIDO and a project meant to support the Pakistani SMEs with a major role played by SMEDA and ITPO. The project has run for over 10 years at a cost of 10.75 million euros, built and it built a strong ties between Pakistan and the Italian SMEs. It now enters in, in, its, fin in its final months of life. Our Agency for Development Cooperation, AIX, of Islamabad, is at the moment building with UNIDO a perspective for the immediate future, as the Director Emanuela Benini will tell you later in closing this event. We welcome this dynamic action in a crucial moment of the COVID-19 era. Potentially convinced to nutritional assets may have a key role in some highly affected areas of our two countries. And the perspective of improving in the longer run a share of food security with better and more sustainable nutritional advantages goes beyond the COVID conjuncture and may go beyond the Punjab territories to build a more structural response to much challenges on one side, the level shortcomings of youth and women in the other side. Italy is Pakistan's third biggest market in Europe, and bilateral trade is likely to touch new heights in the near future. Today, Italian investors can invest in agro-based industries, construction, mining, textiles, and tourism sectors, where Pakistan could contribute and find complementary areas in design and fashion. Other sectors included IT and telecommunications. Italian companies can take advantage from the investment friendly climate of Pakistan that offered best return on the foreign investment with, with economic policies providing for legal protection to foreign investment. Pakistan is the fourth, fourth largest meal producing country in the world, which provides tremendous opportunities for added value products in the dairy sector. 
The dairy sector in Pakistan plays a significant role in the national economy, and its value is more than that of the wet and cotton sectors combined. The dairy and livestock sector alone contributes 11% of Pakistan's GDP, according to our data, and 49% of the value addition in the agricultural sector. Pakistan's current agricultural is close to approximately 54 billion liters per annum, which makes it the fourth larger, largest milk producer in the world. Milk is one of the most popular food items in Pakistan and is consumed as fresh, boiled, powdered, and in processed forms, such as yogurt, ghee, lassi, butter, cheese, ice cream, sweets, and other confection navies. Indeed, the dairy sector possibility for Pakistan to earn nearly to as 30 billion from export in the dairy products or more than one count. The government of Pakistan formulated its first even ever livestock policy in 2007, based on which many corporations have made significant investments in the development of cold chains in remote dairy producing areas. The government has also started giving incentives. These include regulatory measures for imports of high yielding animals, semen, and embroils for cross breeding, duty free imports of veterinary, dairy, and livestock machinery, equipment, and exemption from retail sales tax for processed products. Pakistan is one of the highest levels of urbanization in South Asia. In South Asia. By 2030, 50% of the population is expected to live in cities. This, coupled with a population increase, is expected to increase the demand for dairy and related goods and services. The dairy sector has recently been able to attract significant foreign direct investments. In December 2016, a Dutch giant, Royal Friesland, acquired 51% of Anglo Food Pakistan which was one of the largest private sector foreign direct investments in Pakistan's dairy sector, amounting to 450 million. Under the New Deal and 2020 strategy arrangements, Anglo Food will aim for higher milk quality by a variety of milk packages and products and farmers' capacity building, leading to a reduction of poverty. Around 800 million of foreign and local investments has taken place in dairy farms in the dairy processing sector over the last five years in Pakistan. Opportunities to invest in Pakistan, establishment of efficient mini pasteurization plants, milk chilling units, storage facilities, and refrigerator transport systems. We need to mobilize investments, technologies, and managerial know-how. In this sense, Italy is a great country with the, where the constant innovation of our Italian enterprises can offer the best in technology and know-how in a big range of sectors, and that can match perfectly with the needs of Pakistani enterprises. On the other hand, Pakistan is a strong and large consumer market, over 200 million inhabitants, strategically placed at the center of Asia crossroads, which represents an important center and market for both trade exchanges and for interregional investments that has been boosted by the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. May those elements become an important starting point to continue to work together towards opportunities, economic collaboration, and joint venture between both countries. The embassy is always willing to facilitate the cooperation amongst, among our companies in order to keep this perfect bridge with it, where Italy and Pakistan can continue to work together. So being at the beginning of my mission in this country, and as well, I wish uh, the best uh, to my Pakistani colleague in Italy, who is uh, beginning almost in the same days, I can assure everybody that you will find uh, in our embassy a point of support and uh, uh, in strict coordination with all those involved in this very important initiative for the two countries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you.
you to both ambassador that this has been an honor for us to have you here and you know in this open remark for this webinar in this important sector for Pakistan and for Italy as well. So now we will um, go ahead with the agenda and then we will give the, the floor to Mr. Suhain Salim that is from the Punjab Board of Investment and he will highlight the incentive of the provincial and federal government, especially for this uh, you know, sector and potential investors in dairy and livestock. So Mr. Suhain Salim, director of uh, Punjab Board of Investment, and trade, you have the floor. Mr. Echo, now. Hi. Hello. Hello. Ah, how are you? Yes, very well, thank you. So let me, uh, should I start with my presentation? Yeah. So I'll be sharing the screen so that you can, uh, everyone could see the presentation. I'm thankful to you for arranging this seminar, this webinar, and giving me opportunity to share uh, the information and present, represent Punjab Thank you. Hope you can see the presentation right now. Yeah, we can see. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is Dr. Sohail Salim. I'm Director of Facilitation, Punjab Board of Investment and Trade. Uh, I've shared my email address and telephone numbers, WhatsApp number over here, so that if someone has certain questions, they can contact me after this webinar, and I, I would be able to reply to them. So. Uh, So just the first slide, the Punjab at a glance, uh, Punjab is actually 55% of the population. Pakistan, we contribute about 60% to GDP. Our contribution to manufacturing sector is 58% and 68% contribution to Pakistan's annual food grain production. So that's why we call Punjab as food basket of Pakistan. Uh, we have skilled graduates of 500,000 annually. Uh, we have more than 68,000 industrial units, and we have 55% of the population, which is under the age of 30. So in this presentation, I'll be just sharing a uh, value proposition of Pakistan and Punjab initially, then I'll be sharing uh, the business opportunities as well. And the main uh, focus would be on the incentives offered by the government of Punjab and Pakistan. So the incentives offered, uh, I'll be discussing in two parts, one at this stage and one at the end of this presentation. So as far as incentives uh, from the Punjab Pakistan is concerned, 100% uh, foreign ownership equity is allowed in Pakistan. We have quite liberal investment regime and uh, there is facilitation uh, for the investors uh, who want to come to Pakistan and invest. All the sectors of economy are open for the investment in Pakistan. And as right now we are discussing the dairy and livestock sector, this is, this is uh, one of the key sectors and priority sectors of the government for investment. 100% uh, remittance of capital profits dividends is allowed in Pakistan. And there is a concession on the custom duty on uh, plant and machinery. And we have uh, Commercial Arbitration Act 2011, which gives right to the investors for uh, to resort to high courts for dispute resolution. As far as uh, uh, doing business is concerned, uh, we have uh, we are enforcing contracts. We have, uh, as far as the paying taxes is concerned, it's online payment facility available for all the social security, pension contributions, etc. There's ePay Punjab mobile app available to facilitate the investors. The first part is the registration, and that is very important when someone is coming to invest in a region. So there's online issuance of the documentations, where, uh, which is available in Punjab. And then there's online availability of registered deeds and deed templates are available. 
uh, for starting a business, uh, one can register itself online with SCCP portal. Uh, there's online fee payment system available. All the provincial BOIs and the federal BOI, they've got detailed information available on their portals. Uh, we do help for the visas, the work visas for those who want to come here in Pakistan and work while investing over here. As well as the construction permits are concerned, in Punjab we have online issuance of building permits and completion certificates, etc., which is required for uh, the investors. As well as the getting electricity is concerned, even this is uh, the applications can be processed online, and the 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 Punjab government and the Punjab Board of Investment and Trade, we are available here to facilitate, and we hand we do hand holding right from the beginning actually. We share the business opportunities with the potential investors. Once they identify the sector they are interested in, then we help them to link with the private sector and the government sector agencies, departments, and companies so that they can get the maximum information from all those private and public sector departments and companies. Then we help them to get all the NOCs, approvals, and we provide one window operation to them. We have uh, in Punjab Board of Investment and Trade, we have uh, different wings to facilitate and help the investors. For example, we have a facilitation week wing and this facilitation wing is, uh, I'm heading actually the facilitation wing. The second wing is the transaction, which is business advisory and the policy research. Wing. In facilitation, we actually help the investors uh, uh, to identify the location. We help them to, uh, for the business match making, uh, matchmaking and we help them to deal with the government departments for getting approvals. Actually, uh, in short, I would like to say that PBIT's facilitation wing uh, makes it convenient for the investor to establish and expand their operations in Punjab. These are certain uh, few uh, multinational and local companies already working over here and we are in touch with them. We are well engaged with them during their commercial journey in Punjab. As well as the livestock and dairy sector is concerned, uh, my other seniors would be highlighting all these things in detail uh, in their presentations, definitely. So one thing is very important that even in COVID situation, this sector is very important right now for Pakistan, because this sector is definitely going to work even in post COVID situation. So uh, the 60% share, over 60% share is in, uh, in the GDP is of agri from the agriculture side and 11.6% uh, is the share in GDP. There's 2.5%, uh, 5.8% uh, growth even uh, at this stage. These are just a uh, few uh, figures which shows that we are uh, the fifth largest, largest milk producer in the world, mainly the buffalo milk. And, uh, and buffalo milk, you know, is very important uh, for the cheese making as well. So we have uh, almost double is the milk produced by the buffalo as compared to cow. Considering the population of Pakistan and considering that Pakistan is seventh largest milk consumer country, so there is a lot of opportunity to invest in, in setting up pasteurization, USD system plants, in refrigeration services, in uh, especially in uh, this diversified products and value addition. Generally in Pakistan, 30% to 40% of our produce is wasted, which is, which is which, which we just call post harvest losses, especially in case of agriculture generally. The same happens in, in livestock and dairy as well, because just 5% of milk is being processed and marketed through formal channels in Pakistan. So there's a lot of room for investment in, in this sector. And uh, we have, uh, as far as the value addition is concerned, the production of flavored milk, cheese, powder milk, this is very important for the investors to know who wants to invest in Pakistan. And there are a lot of international key players already working here, the Dutch FMC, Morinaga, uh, Tetra Pak, Nestle, they're all here. Roughly 70% of Pakistan's cheese demand is fulfilled by imports. China, Denmark, New Zealand, UK, France, Belgium, 
a lot of countries are already import, uh, exporting uh, this uh, cheese to Pakistan. Locally, it's produced by very few companies such as Adams, Nuku, Hali Foods, etc. So there is a uh, big I mean, room for the investors to uh, invest in this sector. An estimated annual import is about 1,400 tons, right? Pakistan hosts one of the largest livestock population, although, but uh, there is a lot of opportunity in the meat as well. If uh, certain uh, investors are interested in uh, meat, so there is a lot of, I mean, potential in halal, halal uh, regulators, certifiers, halal park and hub, technology solutions, logistics, integrated meat production and processing, meat processing for domestic demand and export markets. Slaughter, modern slaughterhouses is another one of the areas where the investors can come and invest. Poultry sector, uh, the current investment in the sector is over 800 billion. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, annual growth is around 10%. And uh, the multi meat contributes about 35% of the total meat production of the country. Egg production showed a growth of 5.6% which shows that there is uh, a good opportunity for the investors to come in the sector. Now, as I discussed earlier about the incentives offered by the government of Pakistan and Punjab, one important uh, I mean, uh, incentive is of special economic zones. This is very important for the investors because when they come to a country, they need to know that what sort of facilities they would be given and uh, purchase of land, land title, and then having the fiscal incentives. These are very important, I mean, segments which are under consideration generally among the investors. Pakistan now offers facility for developing special economic zones. So I would like to highlight it because uh, we have uh, already we have eight special economic zones already available in Punjab. I'm talking about Punjab. The eight special economic zones are already there having 7.7 thousand uh, acres of land available. And there are six more special economic zones which are in process of approval, which will cover uh, more than 5,500 acres. So there are two opportunities here. One is developing a special economic zone agriculture park where the developer has basically two fiscal incentives. So anyone who wants to invest in Pakistan and is interested to have a special economic zone of its own, so they can have land, which is as per law, minimum 50 acres of land, maximum there's no limit. So maybe they can come up with 500 acres of land or something like that. So they can develop of their own, a complete special economic zone for agriculture, livestock, and dairy sector. So what they can do is they can develop that area and we will help them to get approval for declaration of this zone, this part as a special economic zone, which will have two fiscal benefits for the developer who is interested to develop this big park and will invite local and foreign companies to establish their businesses over there. The, one, the first part is the one-time custom duties exemption on plant and machinery, even though if the machinery is required for developing that part. And the second is income tax exemption for five years. So this is one part of it, of the special economic zone regime that if investor is interested to come to Pakistan and have a big piece of land in collaboration with the government, all of itself independently. So they can have a piece of land and then they can uh, start the process of this uh, getting approvals for the special economic zone. And we will help being authority of Punjab for the declaration of special economic zone. So there are two, I mean, authorities working parallel. One is at the provincial level, which is Punjab and uh, the office of Punjab board of investment and trade where I'm sitting right now, is actually the secretariat for that special economic zone authority, Punjab. So the second part is the federal government, which is the prime minister office. 
So the provincial part of Special Economic Zone Authority is being chaired by the chief minister of the province and the federal one is chaired by the prime minister. So this is one opportunity where the Italian investors can come to Pakistan and have a piece of land of their own and can develop is as it as a special economic zone and can offer piece of land for sale or on lease to other local or the Italian or the other investors to come and have their enterprises. The second part is that Italian investors can come to Pakistan and can and we can help them to get piece of land within the already approved and uh, announced special economic zones, which you can see uh, the list of eight special economic zones, uh, if you can see on the screen. And uh, the six are in process. Once they are approved, they will be shared with you as well. So we have a lot of land available within those special economic zones, and they are widespread in the whole Punjab. So they are available right on the motorways. They are available near Lahore. They are just, I mean, 30 minutes drive from Lahore. They are available from maybe one hour drive from Lahore. They are available in central Punjab. They are available in south Punjab. So it's widespread. So in whole Punjab, you can have, right now, you can have eight. And in future, you'll be having 14 special economic zones available where, in, where an investor can come and purchase a, a piece of land and can establish its factories, processing units in that particular zone. So if that enterprise comes and purchase a land, piece of land or come and get land on lease, whatsoever, whatsoever the case may be, and start its, want to start its operation within that special economic zone, that particular enterprise or a company would have two physical benefits again. When, uh, number one is all the, uh, I mean, uh, machinery and plant for the import of that machinery and plant, there's one time custom duties exemption. And the second is income tax exemption for 10 years. So, uh, I mean, this is a good opportunity for all the Italian companies. If they want to come and start their operations in Punjab, we can offer land within those special economic zones where they'll get land definitely on the uh, in price announced by the government of Pakistan, government of Punjab. And once they decide to have their operations within that uh, special economic zone, they will get two benefits. Number one, one-time custom duties exemption on all the plant and machinery. And the second is income tax holiday for, the ten, for 10 years. And one thing is very important that, that exemption of income tax, which I, I shared earlier, 10 years, starts from the day of production not from the day of construction. So they do have margin of maybe a year or so to establish their factories. Uh, in post COVID, uh, we have uh, decided, the government has, I mean, decided to offer relief package to different uh, sectors, especially we are focusing uh, the livestock and dairy sector. There was, uh, in our, Previously, we had uh, CPAC, uh, I mean, uh, projects with regards to infrastructure only. Right now, we are, for future, we are uh, focusing on agriculture, livestock, and dairy sectors to be part of that CPAC as well. And non Chinese companies are also, uh, I mean, welcome uh, to relocate their industry uh, from their respective countries and they can come to uh, Pakistan. And, and in addition to that, I would like to share that uh, in Punjab, we are now developing a CPEC special economic zone as well. This is of uh, 4,000 acres, roughly. To be precise, uh, 3,943 3 acres. And uh, all the foreigners, foreign companies are allowed to relocate and to that, I mean, zones. For getting again two benefits, one is the I mean, custom duty exemption and one is the tax audit. So uh, we are, I mean, uh, offering uh, our services from Punjab Board of Investment and Trade. We'll offer one window of facilitation to all those uh, investors. We'll uh, help them to get all the NOCs, approvals. We'll help them to identify the piece of land for them. 
will help them to get all the I mean uh, information the relevant information required from different departments will help them for I mean, matchmaking will help them to uh, I mean get in contact with the private sector companies as well so this is brief from my side I would like to answer the questions well, Dr. Salim, for your for providing us, you know this, uh, you know critical information about uh, you know the opportunities in, in Punjab and also all the incentives that the uh, region uh, can offer also for potential investors and mainly for the Italian one. So it was a very interesting presentation, and so thank you, thank you very much also for joining us and you know this morning for this afternoon in Pakistan uh, for this webinar. So. Let's go ahead uh, with the agenda and then we will have the Q&A at the end in order if somebody has some questions, they can raise the hand or write uh, the, the question directly on, on the system and then we, we can, you know, directly, uh, you know, answer at the, at the end. So thank you very much again. And then we thank you very much. go ahead uh, with the presentation uh, of Professor Dr. Nassim Hatmad, that is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Veterinary and Animal Science of Lahore. He will also give us, you know, a focus, uh, you know, about the livestock and live sectors and also the opportunities uh, that are available also in, in Lahore and Punjab area. Professor Hatmad, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dino, uh, first of all, <clears throat> uh, I would like, can you hear me and can you see the slides? Uh, yes, well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, worthy uh, Diana Batachia, head UNIDO ITPO Italy, uh, His Excellency Johar Salim Sahib, Ambassador of Pakistan to Italy, uh, His, Excellency, His Excellency Andreas Pararizi, Ambassador of Italy to Pakistan, uh, my former uh, Vice Chancellor UVS, Professor Pasha, uh, and all the uh, speakers of this webinar and the distinguished delegates. I am very thankful to the Embassy of Pakistan in Rome, UNIDO, and ITPO uh, for uh, asking me to share our thoughts and ideas on uh, the livestock and dairy sector and potential uh, uh, potential uh, investments from Italy. Uh, can I go to the next? Although I think both countries, uh, Italy in the Southern Europe, Southwestern Europe, and Pakistan, as uh, rightly earlier been said, uh, have a very geo strategic position in the emerging markets. Although we are separated by about more than 5,000 kilometers of uh, uh, space, uh, but each country has its own comparative advantage for which we need to collaborate and enhance uh, the commerce. Uh, with this, uh, uh, I think some of the things already have been uh, mentioned by the distinguished uh, excellencies and speakers, uh, so I would not go into much uh, repetition but the total, uh, this slides uh, give you the total uh, acreage, how much is the cultivated land, 80% of them incidentally or luckily is irrigated. The uh, uh, hugely populated Pakistan, the, the division in rural and urban uh, and the growth rate and also the, what Pakistanis are uh, directly or indirectly eating uh, uh, livestock products, for example, and also the poultry, the meat, uh, milk, almost 200 liters, um, and the eggs reaching almost 100 per annum basis, uh, based upon the household economic uh, surveys. Uh, if we, as earlier been uh, mentioned again, just to highlight that uh, the most recent economic survey of Pakistan indicates that livestock within agriculture is now more than 50. It's almost touching 60% of share if we much more than the crops, uh, which are rice, maize, sugarcane, wheat. So 
primarily. So the sh economic share of livestock is much more, and this is milk and meat. Fisheries uh, and forestry are the other two minor segments in the agriculture. Uh, as earlier, uh, Dr. Salim also mentioned Punjab, uh, which we, this university, uh, Dr. Dino uh, introduced, is a very historic, 100 and uh, more than 38 years old. And we have uh, the located basically in Punjab, and Punjab uh, has the major uh, share in milk production, egg production, feed production, and the poultry industry all uh, is, is 80, uh, almost uh, 70, 80% is, is in Punjab. So uh, the livestock uh, after agriculture is the second biggest economic activity. And this is by the rural people, farmers, uh, almost 30 to 35 million people are directly or indirectly engaged in livestock and also the livestock, the, the sheep, goat, uh, cattle, buffaloes uh, are owned, majority of them are owned uh, by the small landless farmers. And uh, these farmers are dependent for their income about 40% from uh, the, the livestock. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity uh, to mention that in last one decade or little more than one decade in Pakistan, we are seeing uh, emerging commercial dairy industry for which the Italian companies involved in, uh, we know the Fiat story. When I was a kid, Fiat tractor was a brand name of Italy in, in Pakistan. So I think the, the silage industry, the milking machine industry, and if we keep the value added products of milk and meat, uh, I think the, as rightly said by all, and I fully ag agree and endorse that the, the industry uh, involved in Italy should be looking forward uh, to Pakistan for future investment and support uh, in, in gaining this momentum of uh, commercial dairy as well as meat. Although we are not talking much about meat, but meat also uh, is uh, from small ruminants and large ruminants. I have one or two slides I'll, I'll share. So that is also uh, growing. Uh, now a few slides which depict, uh, I have borrowed this from uh, our Federal Ministry of uh, Food, Agriculture and Research. Uh, that, uh, that shows that in Pakistan, the demand for livestock product is on increasing side. And uh, the technologies uh, are available. Uh, for example, uh, if we talk about the best um, uh, milk breeds, uh, uh, which is buffalo, Neely Ravi buffalo is best all over the Pakistan. And um, we can perhaps uh, have a, another talk on, on the advantages of Buffalo. And we recently, last year, organized International Buffalo Congress, where a you know, decent sized delegation from Italy and 22 other countries uh, participated. And Government of Punjab supported UAS and Buffalo Research Institute to organize this. Uh, so, oh, and also the international genetics in terms of Holstein from uh, Netherlands, from US, from Australia, uh, they are allowed and it's growing. Uh, processing, as rightly said, uh, they are available, but there is a lot of room uh, that uh, we need to improve uh, upon and uh, <coughs> where Italian uh, companies would be interested in. The processed food is the futuristic look of milk and meat. Uh, here comes the profitability. Uh, I think that is also very, very clear that uh, in dairy, whether it is cheese making, uh, whether it is, it is the value addition, uh, grading of meat, uh, packaging of meat, <laughs> enhancing the shelf life, so uh, we can uh, go for the, uh, not only meeting the domestic market, but uh, 
already for example in meat we have a uh, decent numbers which show last uh, five seven years there, the, 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 there is increase in export of pakistani meat although limited into gulf countries uh, i think and the opportunities uh, the way i see uh, that uh, in pakistan where the international uh, subsidies are lowering pakistan has high uh, better uh, opportunities to compete in international market and uh, as uh, earlier said uh, mozzarella cheese for which uh, the, the europe particularly the italy is famous uh, which comes from the buffalo milk we can collaborate uh, we know that there are issues of foot and mouth disease uh, which will uh, be i'll come to, for that comment in the next slide goat milk camel milk we also uh, you know uh, try to market and we have experience and just today in dawn daily i was uh, here you increase uh, mutton as i earlier mentioned and the beef uh, we have uh, private sector is uh, coming up uh, in in a really you know small sized uh, farms and eid ul adha our um, religious uh, you know uh, Uh, feast is coming uh, a few weeks from now and that also uh, uh, with large number of uh, small and large ruminants um, uh, goats are slaughtered so people keep it and there is a high economic activity uh, uh, into this uh, now i always uh, see that the federal government and also the provincial government related to livestock is uh, has a enabling environment as a conducive environment the policies are private sector led uh, your development they believe uh, the facilitation as rightly said by dr sohail uh, sahib is the, the government is facilitating and also i would like to mention the prime minister um, uh, present prime minister's initiative Uh, by the federal government and also implemented by the provincial livestock department is the control of foot and mouth disease uh, which is prevalent in our dairy and uh, 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 animals uh, uh, remember that uh, in 2007 the, there used to be a disease which called as rinder pest now the fao the oie has uh, declared pakistan free and our government is committed to 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 uh, to finish or to revamp uh, or control through zones and uh, so investment from the government is a lot in fmd control and i think also uh, recently the budget has been passed uh, the uh, livestock dairy Uh, sector always has been uh, you know they try to support whether uh, import of machinery or uh, pharmaceutical there is an enabling environment for the uh, investors uh, uh, as i mentioned that the new uh, commercial dairying is also right uh, almost 5 to 10000 uh, exotic heads holsteins for which the farms in uh, italy are also very famous uh they are allowed to be imported uh and uh, along with them uh, the, our farmers our new entrepreneurs are very very knowledgeable and they want to use semen uh, they want to raise them uh, you know pure the semen is also being imported uh duty and tax rebates are available uh for the feed premixes and milk replacers uh an import of veterinary dairy and livestock machinery equipment as i just mentioned are allowed at a very reduced rate uh just listed few uh, points uh, then i will shift to what you was um, uh, is doing in a pick more of a pictorial uh, presentation uh, uh, areas commercial dairy i believe fattening of beef or mutton i think that is an area where uh, investment is going uh another area is uh, salvaging high producing animals in the southern part of uh, the country karachi where after getting the lactation 
those high genetic as uh, you know slaughtered but uh, if that can be saved that uh, and people have already have started bringing that into south punjab and saving those uh, uh, high genetic uh, animals a uh, semen production unit and ai services uh, predominantly government is doing it but private sector now is showing and uh, small scale they are doing it uh, establishment of milk collection and chilling center refrigerant transport as a you know chain supply i don't want to go much into it but uh, the international players as mentioned earlier are into it uh, angro uh, nestle uh, there are others uh so and the value added dairy products i think that is the area for the future investments uh, and now uh, next few slides 5 or 10 are more of a pictures from the uvas what the uh, uvas at uh, our campus we call it ravi campus one hour from lahore uh, on southern side as uh, dairy herd for experiment for research of neeli ravi buffalo and buffalo remember is as i said is neeli ravi is the best and 60% of the milk produced in pakistan is coming from the buffaloes so buffaloes are part and parcel of uh, the pakistani livestock segment another uh, in, in cows we have sahiwal cows not much number but holstein and friesian or their crosses as i just mentioned are are the growing industry uh, at our uh, farm Uh, which uh, i must acknowledge uh, the leadership of professor talat pasha uh, that uh, through his uh, efforts we were able to attract the usda uh, funding for uh, uh, developing this state of the art small scale uh, farm for exotic uh, cows and for the training the milking parlor parlor and training courses uh, for the professionals for the farmers for the last 5 years we have been uh, involved it, in it because from the biosecurity point uh, the commercial people are very you know restrictive of allowing the training uh, things so that was the purpose that we had this and also to train our human resource into the modern dairying i think that is the area that was the purpose that we uh, we also with this have the farm advisory services Uh, which uh, if someone wants to call us we can go there they improve their reproduction their economics uh, uh, we call it audit service and also the nutrition and management now uh, this picture is unique i think uh, some of the people uh, uh, joining as a participants must uh, are are are, uh, are are present in this picture i see professor pasha and other pakistani delegation humaira iqbal and dr nuzat from sahiwal uh, they visited in june last year with the help of uh, unido and sme uh, smida and other donors for about one week and uh, that was the first and this today's webinar is is an outcome as a follow up of this uh, activity and we would not like it to be stopped with the help of um, uh, itpo um the the embassy of pakistan and uh, with the blessings i think we need to keep this momentum and pace uh, keep going uh, at uh, we uh, uh, at the uas have our department of dairy uh, science uh, dr junaid uh, is uh, sitting beside me a uh, very active young fellow um, and uh, we had last year uh, david mcgill from uk who came and spent one week with us and uh, in, uh, invited the entrepreneurs the faculty from all over pakistan where he taught and uh, updates on his skills in the cheese production uh, as i mentioned earlier in my talk buffalo congress which uh, we had about total of 700 participants about 100 foreign delegates came from 22 different countries and italy was also led by professor antonio borghisi an old friend and he is the president of international buffalo federation uh, based in rome and uh, uh, he frequently visits pakistan uh, and uh, does uh, you know concert advising job 
and he was very we were grateful he came over and uh, this uh, uh, session is a pre session where we had one to one business meeting and this was exclusively was uh, the the cheese group and uh, you may also uh, recognize that this uh, was co-chaired by minister livestock hasnain dareshak an ardent uh, lover of livestock and supporter uh, of the uh, livestock uh, and dairy sector uh, dr borghizio borghizi antonio borghizi also visited some of the uh, facilities in private sector around lahore during his visit uh, in february 2019 last year uh, another friend i must also appreciate and acknowledge we have uh, uh you know i joined as a vice chancellor only this uh, january but my area is dairy reproduction uh, for which uh, we have a very old uh, uh, relationship with the university fredrico 2 at napoli and uh, gianluca nelia professor of dairy reproduction uh, he joined us for also and gave an excellent talk um, uh, during the international buffalo Uh, congress and we are in touch uh, with uh, with these guys uh, uh, all the time so uh, the idea is that in uh, as i was share, uh, sharing with yesterday on a whatsapp with uh, uh, khalid uh, hanif sahib that you know we would love to have collaboration you was uh, would love to have collaboration with some leading uh, you know mutually which are uh, you know universities in italy for mutual collaboration and the development of research production training exchange and everything uh, this small university uh, i am i'm so pleased and humbled uh, that uh, we are milk produced at our farm from buffalo saiwar and exotic we are uh, you know having a value addition and uh, the milk coming to my home is from the the uvas herd and also the meat coming from uh, coming to my home which i buy is from the meat shop we have uh, so we also have a meat shop uh, uh, another uh, uh, you know very good facility uvas has is the university diagnostic lab i don't know where we are on the time but i'll try to rush through uh, dino can yes. i can you go ahead yeah uh, just one minute to wrap up uh, okay. so so university diagnostic lab where uh, you know it's uh, iso certified different test and we helped malaysia to, to import uh, a decent size about 50 to 100 heads of uh, live animals so we did a lot of testing so if that has you know so that's also decent facility we are into ultrasound training to enhance capacity of our producers and also we have an outstanding uh, young guy uh, who is a faculty dr hayat jaspal who has uh, totally changed our meat uh, department and uh, we have into training we are into research we are into assisting the the producers uh, in grading and improving shelf life uh, of the meat producers working uh, holding hand Uh, with them very very closely and learning at the same time uh, so i think uh, my last slide is that what i feel that uh, if i have to summarize everything uh, that pakistan uh, has an enabling environment for investment in dairy livestock and uh, the fmd free zones when they are you know created there be a boom i foresee uh, in 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 this industry uh the private sector is gaining momentum in in uh, locally and both dairy as well as in meat uh, the comparative advantage uh, the pakistan has the you know best buffalo breed which has 6 to 7% fat and in futuristic look the semen from buffalo the embryo from buffalo conventional or sexed i foresee as the potential products through which we can really Uh, change uh, livestock economics uh, equipment of dairy and meat processing and cheese i think uh, italy has a much higher comparative advantage uh, for veterinary pharmaceutical also uh, they, those are the uh, the areas for for future investments uh, with this 
I once again thank you all the organizers for asking me to share, and I would be delighted uh, to to answer if there are any questions during uh, the question answer session. Thank you, Dino. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Nassim. It was very interesting, you know, and you really gave us an excellent, uh, you know, picture about the opportunities that exist in Pakistan. That there are so many more that we uh, were expecting for sure. And as you said, we are in the very right momentum, you know, to, to support and then to boost also this sector in, in Pakistan. So, uh, as, as you mentioned, and uh, as was mentioned before by in the opening remarks, uh, Unido ITPO Italy is working here as an honest broker in order to facilitate this uh, relationship, in order to, to bring also more technology know-how and then also to transfer best practice into Pakistan and then also, uh, you know, to support uh, this sector. So really, uh, thank you again, Professor Dr. Nassim. As you said, you also mentioned about, you know, the cooperation that uh, was initiated by the universities. Also, we want, the, uh, we want to explore, because there are many memorandums of understanding that have been signed uh, between different universities, and this will be part also of another initiative that uh, uh, together with the Italian Development Cooperation Agency, we wanted to set up, uh, and, and then uh, Mrs. Benini will give us also uh, some highlights about, uh, you know, this initiative that we will call the Pakistan-Italy Network, when we will include also this uh, relationship between the different universities in Italy and Pakistan uh, in order to support this cooperation in the long run. Thank you again, and then we go ahead with the agenda and we will give the floor to His Excellency Dr. Sh Shesad Amin, that is the CEO of the Pakistan Dairy Association. Dr. Shesad Amin, you have the floor. Hey, uh, can anyone, everyone hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Yes. All right, good afternoon. And uh, good afternoon in Pakistan and buongiorno in Italy. Buongiorno. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the, the host, the organizer, um, special thanks to the head UNIDO, um, the ambassador of Pakistan to Italy, the ambassador to Italy to Pakistan, director PBIT, vice chancellor US and all our distinguished participants uh, in this webinar. To start with, I think I'll, um, you know, I'd like to welcome all of you to the land of opportunities, land of peaceful people, where we spread smile, love, and care through hospitality. Pakistan is one of the biggest market, especially, or rather one of the biggest emerging market uh, in the Asia. Um, we have the highest growth level in terms of retail sector. Uh, most of the things I believe have already identified and mentioned by my fellow uh, and learned colleagues up here, but I'll just quickly go through um, you know, on, on the dairy sector and how things uh, move, um, just to, to share and uh, explain what Parks and Dairy Association does. Parks and Dairy Association is basically representing the forward-looking dairy farmers. And 90% uh, of the packaged dairy products sold in Pakistan are produced by our members. And we are a body where all our members are the only private sector companies assisting the dairy farmers to improve the quality and quantities of milk produced in the country and provide them access to the market through a very structured and formal supply chain. These are a few of our members of Parks and Dairy Association. You can see we have uh, multinational companies and we have large scale uh, local companies as well. So all these members are part of Parks and Dairy Association. Let me quickly uh, elaborate on what uh, most, what our ambassador uh, mentioned about the country dynamics. 
if you really look at a bigger picture, uh, Pakistan contributes about $314 billion in GDP and our annual growth rate is about 4.5%. Interestingly, about 18 or 19% of the GDP accounted for wholesale and retail trade. Now, that is an important number to review because for the investors who wish to come in, you can see that the, our retail constitutes about 20% of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the GDP. Um, 212 million is, is, is the is, per, per, per capita GDP is about 5,800 US dollars. That is as of 2019. Our population growing at a 2% per annum rate, and we are the 18th largest middle class in the world. 60% of our total population is under the age of 24. So now imagine that you know, how big is our market and we are very young, very volatile, young, energetic, and, and you know, our, our consumers wish to try and buy new products. So we, in, in terms of consumer behavior, we are a very young nation taking risks, taking trials, and consuming more products. 37% um, of our total population lives in an urban area and this and, and the shift from rural to urban is increasing day by day as per pwc we will be the 20th biggest economy in the next 10 years or so the current world bank projection suggests that annual working population growth rate is about two and a half percent which is the highest in asia we, we are a country which has the fast urbanization. So people moving from rural areas to urban areas, and at the same time, as I said, the retail market is also growing. If, if we compare the challenges versus the, the, the strong drivers of Pakistan, um, Pakistan in terms of demographics, we are a young population, um, as our ambassador says, we are strategically located between Middle East and Asia. And one of the interesting thing is that we are a consumption-led economy. So most of the products which we produce are consumed locally as well. There are, however, certain challenges uh, in, in the Pakistan market. For example, we are dependent on the imports um, uh, we, we have we, we heavily depend on our imports. Um, we have a fiscal deficit, and our foreign exchange rates are very volatile. Um, if if this is this is a graph, like if you can see that forty one and nineteen, so about sixty percent of the people are under the age of twenty four years. Um, in terms of our peer countries. You know, Pakistan is about, you know, the, the urbanization in Pakistan is about 37%. If you see in terms of the total population, we are the fifth largest population in the world with about 212 million people. Um, we have a low dependency ratio to provide a higher spending populace. And if you see in, in terms of others, you know, Pakistan is at 7.9 and then there are other countries as compared to Bangladesh and Maldives. Our median age is about 24, so we are very young. All these numbers shows that how big is the potential. You know, I do not have numbers for Italy, but I have been told and I have been heard that in Italy, the average age of, of individual is much higher. So I think it's about 35 or 40, something like that, but I'm not sure. Um, but Pakistan is a very young country. Yeah, you are right. Yeah. Okay. Um, now let's talk about a little bit of the of the, um, uh, um, the dairy sector. Uh, we are the fourth largest producers of milk in the world. Ninety percent of the dairy sector comprises of farmers with less than ten herds of cattle. That means that we are very scattered. We have smaller farmers, but scattered a lot. 
Unlike the production systems in the developed countries, milk production systems in Pakistan represent small holding with subsistence or market-oriented level farming, allowed by peri-urban and commercial level farming now. Historically, dairy sector has been owned and managed by the private sector. During the past 20 years or so, the new initiatives have been taken because of this active involvement of corporate private sector. These efforts have resulted in improvements like enlargement of herds and import of high quality milk, uh, productivity for animal, milk collection, processing, marketing, machinery, farmers' knowledge, and skills on modern management practices. Okay. Dairy sector in highlights, we, we, we uh, produce about 57 million tons of milk as of 2017. The latest figure in 2019 is about 60 uh, million tons. Um, we, we contribute to 11% uh, in the GDP. We have 10 million farming families with an approximately of 60 million animals. So that's a huge market as compared to our uh, neighboring uh, and peer countries. We also import about 18 billion of uh, dairy products and equipment. At the same time, we also export about 5 billion of dairy products. 57% uh, of our total contribution of livestock is, is, is the value to the agriculture and out, you know, as I said, 10 million households. That means about 30 million people are employed in the livestock sector. Despite being among the top five milk producing nations, we only process 5% of the milk and the, 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 which, is, which is more of a formal sector and taxable sector. You can see that out of 57 million, we, the, 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 uh, the, the raw milk production of 57 million, 20% is generally get wasted at the resource side. So we're left with 45 million liters. And out of the 45 million liters, only 25 million, which is about 55%, is the tradable milk. And out of the tradable milk, 85% milk is sold loose or as raw, and only 7% is processed. So this is the biggest potential and an opportunity for investors to come in and invest into the supply chain, invest into this uh, you know, um, organized sector. The uh, 85% is a huge gap of the loose milk market. And when we say processed milk, out of the 7%, you know, 51% is ambient and the rest 50% is all value added products. So uh, earlier, um, our vice chancellor mentioned that, that the, the, the future is about value addition products. Uh, it could be dairy beverages, it could be cheese, it could be um, other products. So 50% of the market has that and it is also a growing market. Per capita consumption of Pakistan is about 117 liters per year. And in terms of globally market consumption, the tradable milk, we, you know, as I earlier said, we, we trade about 25 billion liters. And if you, and if you can compare, we, the tradable milk, which we have a very close, what the US entire does, you know, US is 19 billion, we have 25 billion, India is about 64 billion. Another thing from the, from the uh, consumption perspective, 52 billion liters of packaged liquid milk, you know, the, the, when, we, when we look at the packaged milk uh, liquid consumption, it is, um, the market size is about 52 billion. Out of that, white milk constitutes of 45%. Milk to use in tea is about 26%. And then we have carbonated drink, water, juices, and other uh, drinks. Now, uh, milk 
is not cheap in Pakistan. Uh, we, you know, we, we have the highest gate prices of milk at a farm as compared to, uh, you know, overall uh, in, in the worldwide. If we compare the, the uh, purchasing power parity index, you can see on the right side, Pakistan is at 0.95. So we pay the highest gate price across the globe if we compare US, Netherlands, Italy, Ireland, so forth. So milk is not very cheap in Pakistan. Um, however, you know, on an average Pakistani, we spend 50 times more on milk. If you compare the PPP uh, formula, you know, the Pakistan has uh, a GDP per person about $5,800, which comes to about $16 per day. But uh, when, when it comes to the, the share of daily GDP spent, you know, as compared to Europe or Germany, it is 0 0.03 and we have 1.5%. So in terms of price parity, we spend 50 times more on milk. That means for the investor who's actually producing and selling in Pakistan, you know, the, the consumption from that perspective is much higher as compared to the uh, other markets. If, if we can add only one person increase in the milk processing side, just one person with the new investors coming in, we would increase approximately 600 million liters in milk collection. We would contribute to 36 billion rupees in the rural economy. Around more than 2,500 employments will be generated. And Industries which are allied industries related to the dairy sector will get benefit about 17 billion rupees. And we will also bring a lot of tax as well as the export opportunity is more than 12 million US dollars from Pakistan. So those, you know, if you can put up new plants, if you can bring more investments in the dairy sector, there's a huge potential, not only just for the consumption of the local market, but as well as exporting from Pakistan to China and other uh, big markets in the region. I'll just quickly share you know, a few slides on cheese. Um, okay, cheese. Uh, in Pakistan, the estimated annual consumption of cheese is about 10,000 tons per year. In 2017, 17 million tons of packet cheese were sold globally. Um, USA is, is ranked number one in terms of cheese, followed by France, Germany, and Russia. Um, Pakistan is now, in the past few years, we see a huge shift in consumption patterns. We see a huge shift of eating habits, you know, and our cheese consumption has increased in the past a decade or so. Adams is one of the company remains the market leader. Um, we have foreign uh, imported product, which is a happy cow. Um, if, we, if, we, if you look at the cheese market, it's about 10,000 tons per year. Out of it, the bigger portion, about 75% of the market is business to business market. And about 25% goes into retail or journal trade. Um, B2B is because you know, when we talk about restaurants, we talk about, you know, hotels, commercial elements, and that's where people go out, have cheese, burgers, food. So that's the biggest market we, uh, uh, we have. And out of this 75%, 70% um, is the mozzarella, and um, approximately 28% is the cheddar, and then to a very small is the other 2% uh, market is for other uh, cheese. Uh, when we look at the journal trades, uh, that's where the, the, the share is slightly different. It's about 62% mozzarella and then 28% um, cheddar. Pakistan retail, you know, the, the last biggest census was 2015-16 with the Asia Nielsen company. Um, we expected about 670,000 FMCG stores. 
those stores by 2019 has gone up to by 800,000 plus. So that's about 20% increase in about three years time. We have approximately over 400,000 uh, general uh, stores. Urban and rural out of 674, we have 388,000 of urban and 286,000 for rural uh, stores. Interestingly, for every 280 Pakistanis, we have one store. So this, this is, it shows that, you know, uh, and then now it's about 800,000 plus. So these FMCG outlets are also increasing at, at a rate of uh, almost 30%. Now, if you look at the retail market as of currently from the cheese perspective, total market growth is about 45% out of which 28% is business to business and 17% is coming from the retail side. And again, as I said, mozzarella cheese has a 70% share. So these numbers shows, um, and then the market um, dynamic shows that this is a very favorable market for a dairy sector. Um, just to quickly share with you that in other parts of the world, especially when you talk about France, Finland, Denmark, Gen, uh, Germany, per capita consumption of cheese is 25 kg um, per an, uh, an year. Um, we, we are now um, becoming um, a cheese consuming country. And our trend, they said, you know, the, the buying patterns and the consumption habits are moving towards um, the, the higher uh, consumption rate of the cheese. Um, we have about six, seven uh, major players uh, currently uh, in, in the cheese market. Um, out of which the, there are uh, three local big companies, Nurpur, Adams, and Dayland. And then we have three imported uh, you know, players, Embog, Happy Cow, Present, and Arla. So this is all I have. Just to quickly uh, sum it up, uh, livestock is raised by more than about 10 million small and landless families. The, this is you know, the livelihood through the dairy sector is about 65 to 75 million people. Um, it is a form of social security for the poor, um, as well as you know they can cash it at any time when they need. Dairy sector is an important component of Pakistan's economy. Um, just to tell you the value of milk alone exceeds the combined value of wheat, rice, maize, and sugarcane together in the country. So thank you so much again for the opportunity. Um, if you have any questions, I'm always here to uh, no, respond to that. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chahaz Hamin. It was really, uh, you know, interesting to, to hear from you. And it was an amazing presentation that you uh, gave us uh, regarding, you know, this, uh, as you said, uh, a favorable market for investment and also for business into dairy and livestock in Pakistan. So I think that we have many ways and, you know, many subsectors in the dairy and livestock uh, industry to explore, uh, starting from, uh, as uh, was mentioned, um, buffalo uh, milk and then the production of mozzarella cheese. That this is also um, where Italy has, I think, one of the leaders in mozzarella cheese uh, production, mainly from buffalo. And so this is also another uh, subsector in the dairy industry that we need even to, to boost and to explore with Pakistan. Uh, thank you so much. And also I would like to thank uh, the commercial attaché of Pakistan, Mr. Khalid Hadnir, who has been also coordinating, uh, you know, all the speakers from Pakistan. And then we will just sweep, uh, you know, switch to the Italian side, then to see how, uh, you know, the, the solutions and technology uh, from Italy can also, um, you know, be uh, useful to, to, to boost and then also to, to give a response, you know, uh, for this dairy and livestock sector in Pakistan. Um, for, this, for this section, I want also to thank another person who has been also coordinating the, the agenda uh, and has been collaborating with us, uh, Esther Temperato, that is also here in, uh, with the public. 
and she, she has been also very useful to coordinate all this agenda. And so I, I want to really uh, thank to her for all the support uh, to, to bring also um, the speakers, mainly from the Italian side, into this webinar. So let's go ahead with the agenda. And, and I would like to give the floor now to Mr. Giulio Moruzzi, uh, the export sales manager from Technoize. Giulio, buongiorno. Your microphone on. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much, Julio, to join us in this Good. webinar. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, excellencies and ambassador. Uh, I just want to do it like that. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm um, Julio Moruzzi. I'm the export sales manager from Techno Ice, which is the ice cream machinery leader. Uh, for ice cream equipment and, uh, and machineries. So today I'm going to introduce you a new profitable way of business to boost ex uh, specialized uh, dairy markets uh, with the benefit of having already materials in-house. Few, few numbers, few information about um, Technoize. Uh, Technoize has been established in 1992 but with a wide expertise in ice cream markets since the 70s. We are seven people team, 60 people team uh, from the designing, manufacturing, and also for the uh, engineering part, uh, uh, which are doing the uh, startup and commissioning of our plants. Uh, we do collaborate uh, with the um, uh, world leader players, but also uh, from, from the basic investments. Uh, in fact, we, we do supply equipment starting from 300 liters up to 10,000 liters per hour, so also big numbers. Our presence in the world, uh, we, are, uh, we are spread uh, to all the five countries, continents. Uh, we, we, are, we have more than 1,200 clients in more than 100 countries wor uh, worldwide with some agencies and sales uh, representatives office. Our headquarters is in Milan, where all the manufacturing activities are, are done. We have also um, sales offices in, um, in Santiago de Chile, in Southern America, in uh, Moscow, Russia, New Delhi in India, and uh, Melbourne for, uh, for um, Pacific and uh, uh, Oceania. But what is ice cream? Ice cream is uh, the national extension for dairies. Uh, in fact, we, uh, we want to margin your milk, which is the, the most added value. Taking uh, consideration that uh, ice cream consumption uh, per capita, we can see that uh, the, the top players, uh, the top consumers of ice cream are New Zealand, United States, and Australia. And then um, we can see that Pakistan is on this position. However, uh, also what I heard this morning with uh, Mr. Shezad and also other, um, other uh, professors, we've seen that the GPD and the growing market and the growing population gives to Pakistan a wide, wide room for, uh, for, uh, and, and good opportunities to grow. And, to have also um, a really uh, bright future ahead for, for growing. But what is ice cream? Ice cream is the only dairy product containing air. In fact, uh, as you can see, 50% uh, is composed by air, 31% water, and 19% solids. That's why it's a really profitable business. So, Going through the main ingredients, we can see that uh, uh, we have, of course, a pasteurized wool milk, skimmed milk powder, stabilizers and emulsifiers, clean water, clean air, coconut oil, palm or other fats, sugar, saccharose, glucose or other type of 
uh, sugar. The most important thing is that uh, fresh milk, uh, uh, which can be obtained from buffaloes or cows, skimmed milk and fat are currently available on, uh, on dairy plants uh, on daily basis. While other ingredients uh, are really uh, easy to find on the local market. So you have actually all the, all the key to, to grow. Face to face, let's see the, um, the differences between one liter of milk and one liter of ice cream mix. Here you see that the milk composition is made by approximately 86% of water, 10% of serum solids, and 3% of fat. While one liter of ice cream is made by 64% of water, a small percentage of stabilizer and emulsifiers, 18% of sugar, total sugar, 11% uh, of serum solids, not fat, and 7% approximately by, by fat. How uh, an ice cream facility is, um, is the, is, could be developed? Uh, of course, we have some, some steps, some sections. Uh, the first one is uh, the material and ingredient reception, storage, mixing and dissolving, pasteurization, homogenization, and storing the mix into the aging tanks to convert it to ice cream, finished products, thanks to the continuous freezers. So from now, you can choose if you want to produce ice cream by fill, by filling, or by extrusion, according to the finished product, the ice cream that you want to, to produce. So we can have cones, cups, bulks, tops, and on the other way, we have extrusion products, uh, which are basically uh, sticks, uh, sandwiches, funny face, uh, logs, uh, and other products. Then, of course, we need to harden uh, those finished products, uh, ice creams, to, to be wrapped into uh, complete automated uh, wrapping machines, palletizing, storing uh, into a refrigerated uh, uh, storage, and then the uh, logistic. So on on this part uh, on on uh, on this part we have the most most of the equipment that uh, dairy has already in house or the technology and the the footprint. While on on this side on the right side we have the uh, the let's say the uh, position that and section that uh, could be uh, developed by your own or outsourced. Technoise is, uh, is designing and manufacturing uh, pasteurization units, batch, uh, batch version and HTST uh, versions, uh, starting from 300 liters per hour up to 5,000 liters per hour, of course, according to the, to the finished products and to the capacity of the, of the plant. Uh, from the pasteurization unit, uh, we use aging vats uh, to store and uh, to create the mix. And then we, uh, we have the continuous freezers uh, to transform ice cream mix into ice cream. It's, uh, it's actually quite quite easy process. But we, which kind of products uh, ice cream we can, uh, we can obtain? Uh, it's up, of course, to you, to, to the desire, to the, to the market. We can, uh, we can produce bulks, big cups, small caps, uh, flat top cones, according to, to, the, to the desire, to the requirements. And the ice cream that we can produce uh, could be as any shape, any dimension, any containers. So that's a really wide uh, uh, possibility. How I can I produce the, those products? Uh, uh, of course, with uh, continuous freezers, and then uh, you can also uh, fill manually cups and uh, basically caps and bulks, or with automatic automatic uh, uh, rotary filling machine, 
which is Techno Fee 4000 for uh, 4,000 pieces per hour. And then for higher capacity, we can of course uh, uh, design and manufacture uh, complete lines uh, up to 18 or 20,000 pieces per hour, but even more if required. The, the second alternative could be extruded um, ice cream. For example, could be uh, stick products, funny face, we call it funny face because the, the shape is uh, different from this that could be uh, named as standard. Sandwiches, ball cones, uh, logs, and also certain type of cakes. Even in this case, we, we can design uh, tailor-made bases, the, the shape and the dimension and the composition of ice cream that you want to obtain. So that's a, a really great opportunity to all needs. How can you produce extrusion products? Uh, with, of course, uh, an extrusion line, which is a fully automatic extrusion line with a system to coat uh, the sticks with, uh, with chocolate or, uh, or pulp or syrups. Then we have the um, hardening tunnel and the complete automatic wrapping machines. Those capacity goes from uh, 3,500 up to 25,000 pieces per hour. So there's no, no, no limits actually. Taking a look on the uh, layout, we can, uh, we can see that the footprint is quite, uh, quite limited uh, because of, for example, here in the rendering, we have the pasteurization plants uh, with the aging vets. And uh, on this side, we have the continuous freezers uh, and the automatic uh, rotary filling machine. Uh, we, can, we are talking about less than 12 meters uh, by less than eight meters. So it's uh, really compact. But of course, uh, uh, we can desi design according to the existing layout, the existing facility that you have uh, on uh, turnkey projects. So we just received the, the layout and, uh, and we, are, uh, we are doing the, the designing of the complete line. In conclusion, uh, we can see that um, Technoize is the one-stop solution for turnkey basis projects. We share our know-how and expertise in the area. We have also some ice cream installations in, in, uh, in, your, in, our, in your area. We do provide support and services ten, thanks to our expertise and also uh, from um, uh, Italian headquarters, but also we have uh, 10 uh, engineers uh, based on the five continents. And most important thing, uh, in my opinion, with the most advanced technology for comp complete ice cream uh, facility, because everything is made uh, here at our headquarters in Milan, and we are just applying uh, Italian uh, material and uh, European uh, quality. So uh, I will be glad to, to turn your milk uh, more profitable. So. Uh, please free, feel free to, to ask for any, so, any uh, further details uh, or uh, questions. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for your attention. And uh, this, uh, you can see here my, my contacts. Thank you. Thank you, Giulio. Oh, grazie mille. Thank um, you so much. Yes, it was also very interesting to, to see also how to, you know, make a value addition of the milk products sold through the yes. ice cream. So it's Correct. not only we are talking about only about cheese, about yogurts, also yeah. ice cream is a product that has also a very, uh, you know, high potential uh, for consumption and consumption in, in Pakistan. And indeed, also, this is also uh, how the Italian technology can be useful to, to do this value addition. for Co Correct. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good way to diversify uh, the, the usual market, let's say for cheese or lassi or ghee. So ice cream, I think it's a great opportunity to, to, to ensure a profitable new business for dairy market. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank then you. we will give the floor to Yuri Yurinet from Comat, that also is a very well-known Italian company. And so Yuri is the export manager of uh, Comat, who will give us also a presentation about how the Italian technology can be useful in 
uh, you know, dairy market. Yuri, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Dino. Good evening to everybody. Good evening to the ambassadors, uh, to the organizers of this magnificent uh, webinar. Um, my name is Yuri Yurinets. I'm sales manager from Comet Company, Italy. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about our company, of what we do and uh, what are our features. Comet Company is a manufacturer of equipment. Just a second, I'll share the screen. Okay, can, can you clearly see it? Yeah, it's supposed to expand the... Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you, okay. Comet Company is a manufacturer of equipment for dairy industry, specialized mainly in cheese production equipment. Since 1986, uh, Comet designs and builds machines and complete lines for cheese production. Based, based in Campania region in Southern Italy, which is considered the motherland of mozzarella, our company combines tradition and technology obtaining as a result innovative and unique solutions for cheese production industry. Comet facilities is composed of two factories where all the machines and equipment is built from scratch, including the design phase, treatment of the materials and assembling with final testing. The range of products that can be produced with our machines our machines and lines are capable to produce a wide range of products, starting with pasta filata cheese as classic mozzarella and pizza cheese. Uh, it also includes a hard textured cheeses as provolone, cascaval, and cacciotta, meaning that not only mozzarella is, um, is to represent the pasta filata cheese family, it includes so many varieties that can be produced with the same technology by modifying just some crucial parameters throughout the process. And of course, last but not least, is the very popular ricotta cheese, which is obtained from the whey, the whey that derives from cheese production, the milk coagulation. Okay, so, Dairy factories and plants with big capacities require complete automation in processes that take place throughout the production phase. Comet provides consultancy to its customers by planning and designing the production plan step by step from A to Z. As you can see, starting from the raw material storage and ending up with the packaging of the final product. Our company not only provides turnkey solutions, but also individual machines, individual machines to satisfy the customer's needs. For example, as you can see in this picture, one of the most important phases in cheese production is the milk coagulation. In this phase, the cheese vets or coagulation vets are used to determine the final characteristics of the cheese, which class classifies its type and category. The industrial equipment market is full of standard solutions, but sometimes these solutions are not enough to match the client needs. Our specialists and engineers can customize the design of production line or single machines by adapting them accordingly to the given requirements given by our customers. Innovation and continuous development is very important in our field for a company. Comet designed a new range, recently designed a new range of compact machine intended for smaller capacities. These capacities starting from 25 up to 120 kilograms per hour. Another new innovation 
which is considered uh, most most recent um, uh, is actually the the, the so-called steam cooker, which allows our customers to produce analog processed products, which are obtained by processing different ingredients and raw materials. It gives the customers a chance to not only gives our customers the chance to not only obtain a fresh and traditional product, but also to obtain an analog product, which is very requested on the market, basically for its long shelf life and its competitive price. One of the most important thing to underline is that along with our equipment, our specialists provide technological support to the customers, which is considered the most important part. After installing the machines, our specialists will train the personnel to teach them the right way to exploit the equipment, applying the right technological steps to obtain the desired final product. As you can see, we have uh, a little screens that, show, that are showing some of the different types of cheese of pasta filata, like flip pizza cheese, scamorza, provolone, halloumi, amongst the burrata, amongst the classic mozzarella. There are different varieties of cheeses. That I want to show you is a special type of molding machines. This machine is right here. This machine allows you to produce cheese with a perfect shape without using any molds. This facilitates the molding phase because the user doesn't have to think about uh, transportation and cleaning of a high quantity of molds. Basically, the product after it's molded it goes through the writing of or cooling stage and then it's ready for packaging so no no um, special machines has to be applied uh, to 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 the to the production line for the washing of the final um, of, of the final uh, molds plastic or steel uh, and you don't have to utilize all the space required for the purpose. Another popular product that is gaining so much popularity nowadays is the stick or stream cheese. Uh, the stream cheese is one of the most snow snack cheeses in the industry. Widespread in child and baby food segment, this snack cheese can reach up to three months or more in shelf life. And as last, I want to show you our classic mozzarella machines, mozzarella molding machines um, that not only allows you to mold classic mozzarella, but can also be adapted to produce cheese with different shape if necessary by changing special inserts, which can be customized by the desired shape. That's the end of my small representation. Thank you very much for listening. Another thing I want to add is that during this emergency period, Comet never stopped working, bring it to its customer uninterrupted technical support all over the world. Because as you know, food industry cannot be stopped. It cannot stop in any of these, of these times. And we must give uh, the necessary support to our customers, uh, especially in these emergency periods more than ever. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuri. Uh, excellent presentation. And also to, you know, to, to give this, uh, you know, opportunity to see how we can extend the child life of the product, especially for all the mozzarella and cheese, uh, you know, by product. So this is also very interesting that uh, is uh, another opportunity for Pakistan. Of course, Thank this you. has been, uh, you know, two companies that have, Italian company that, um, you know, that they just illustrate, demonstrate how the Italian technology uh, can also support, you know, and value uh, addition to, to the products in Pakistan. But of course, we have many, uh, you know, many Italian companies in, in the different, you know, subsector of the dairy and livestock industry that can really support, 
you know, the, the Pakistani market. And so that's why this is just uh, one of our second initiative in this sector, but will be no, no the last one, <laughs> of course. And so now we wanted to just to give the floor to the participants. If uh, somebody has a, a specific questions, uh, you know, for the panelists, um, you, you can write it. Uh, directly on, on the on the chat, and then we we will be able to just. To I'll be happy to answer. Please make yeah. questions. So for participant, if you have the question, please uh, just write your your question directly on the on the Zoom webinar chat. No question right now. Somebody raise the hand. Murad Kram, you, you want to, you have a question? Sorry? Okay, they are just raise the hands. Uh, okay, we have all, also, I want to thank uh, my colleague uh, that also is working behind the scenes. Uh, this is uh, Valentina Maltese. She is also very useful, you know, to, let all these webinar running so it's you know it's really you know useful uh, and, and thank you very much to valentina i think that the participants are raising their hands perhaps if you can open the the microphone yeah mian sami hula you you have the to open your microphone and then you can you know just hello Yes, we can hear you. My voice is open. Yes. You can speak. Yes, sure. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead Hello. with your question. <laughs> mm, there is some. Hello. Yes, you can. We can hear you. The voice, Valentina, we can pass to Murad Ikram. Now go ahead with another question. Raise Murad. Ah, okay. Murad Ikram. Murad no? Ikram. Hello. Yes. I, I didn't have a particular question. I just wanted to say that the chat is actually disabled, so we can't type anything in the chat. Yeah, you, you can give your question, please. Ah, we would like to know if you need to go into create a connection uh, with the Pakistan organization to go deeper in details about those topics. So this is Gian Piero Alvaro Velatti. <laughs> yes, of course, we are always, uh, you know, um, trying to to follow up these initiatives. Uh, it's not only, you know, um, a presentation. It's just uh, create two uh, in order to facilitate and create this uh, real connection. So this is just to give an overview for you, for all, uh, you know, um, in particular from one side to the Italians, uh, potential investors, and also uh, technology providers uh, about the real potential of Pakistan in this case. And of course, we hope that after, you know, this uh, COVID on, you know, after this pan uh, pandemic moment, we, we were able also to organize um, a mission, you know, in person in Pakistan. So inshallah uh, uh, in November or December. And so we can explore, you know, and to have this first hand approach with the Pakistani market. Uh, for the time being, we are also, you know, sharing all those contacts with all the participants. So if you have also a particular question that you wanted to raise later on, you can write directly to us to itpo.rom at unido.org. And so we are able also to put in contact, uh, you know, with different contact parts from 
Pakistan or Italy as well. So, uh, Basharat Haspal, he raised their hand. Valentina, we can. Ah, okay. Haspal, being a dairy farmer and a small processor and also having a chain of own stores, can some processing machineries manufacture uh, come into joint ventures, bringing with him less machineries and technology? Can I? Yeah, that's my question. Yeah. Is my mic open? So this is mainly for like a techno eyes or comat. So if you know they are, you are able not only to provide technology, but also perhaps to evaluate some, uh, you know, kind of joint venture, uh, you know, in, in Pakistan. That's right. Yeah. I've got my own chain stores as well and uh, milk producer as well. And uh, at the moment doing, we are doing a very minimal amount of, uh, I mean, uh, processing or packaging. Basically, we are packaging raw milk at the moment. We are actually not going to the, I mean, value addition as the market trends at the moment. There are, as all the other participants already said, that there is a lot of potential in Pakistan for value addition products in Pakistan. So, I've got a lot of my own buffalo milk, nearly uh, 3,000, 4,000 liters daily. So if some, I mean, manufacturer, machine manufacturer with technology, I mean, uh, is interested in bringing his machinery technology to Pakistan, having a joint venture. This uh, Julio, Yule, yes. I don't know if you uh, are able to evaluate this kind of cooperation or? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jasper, for your question. Um, Technize aim is to, to, to share our technology and process, processes lines. So for the time being, I think it's, uh, it's not on uh, our policy to establish uh, any um, firm abroad. Of course, uh, uh, our main key points is uh, the Italian, ma Italian manufacturing. So I think it's not uh, would be not possible but uh, never say never in the future so if, if we if we want we can we can share our contacts and and see what what the future will bring together okay. thank you thank you Julia. thank you yuri you want to add something or is fine oh no actually i i haven't heard the specific question if Mr. Jaspal can repeat it. The, okay, yeah, the question is if you are able to evaluate uh, other type of uh, collaboration, like a, um, a joint venture, not only to provide or transfer technology, but uh, if it is. Well, actually, we are open to collaborate with uh, representatives in Pakistan, uh, because for us uh, is a new market, a new market. So we are looking for potential collaboration and we'll be happy to discuss in the near future. Thank That's you. great. Thank you. We have another question regarding, uh, this is for, um, you know, for Pakistan side. So Gianfranco Solari from Intermiso. Uh, the question is regarding the buffalo in Pakistan. Please indicate the type of the race of this animal. So I don't know if professor from the university, they wanted to know exactly the race of buffalo in, in, in Pakistan. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the question is uh, uh, that what type of buffalo uh, in, is in Pakistan? Uh, we call it, uh, uh, buffalo is of two types. Uh, if we look at the geographical distribution, one is uh, the dairy buffalo. Uh, the other one is the swamp buffalo, uh, the work buffalo. Uh, Pakistan is blessed to have one of the finest breed of dairy buffalo. Uh, we call it Neeli Ravi, uh, like it was Holstein Friesian maybe 100 years ago. Uh, now uh, it was a dis distinct two breeds, but now over these centuries, they have 
joined. One had uh, dairy characters, the other one had meat character, but now it is a mix and we call it Neeli Ravi. Uh, the average milk production per lactation, about you know 300 days plus minus or so, is around on an average is 2,200 uh, or 2,500 liters uh, of milk. And uh, uh, this milk quality is unique, as uh, rightly mentioned by some of the speakers, that uh, for mozzarella cheese, because of the high milk fat and the, the color of the milk is also compared to Holstein is, is uh, just white. And uh, the taste also is, is uh, uh, due to high fat content is different than the uh, the, the uh, people here in Pakistan who uh, they, they who have really uh, drink buffalo milk, they don't want to go to cow milk. And some of the practice we adopt at our farm, we mix the, the buffalo and cow and then sell it. So uh, we have the Neeli Ravi breed and uh, uh, the semen uh, is available if uh, the uh, for China has imported Thailand and some of the Far Eastern countries. Predominantly, uh, the semen production unit is by the government sector, but now private sector is also, also into it. And in the, another uh, DRDF is also now into uh, making uh, another NGO uh, is, is into the semen production of uh, Neeli Ravi. But that's basically in short, I would have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. So another question is, uh, can the government of Pakistan comment on the minimum pasteurization law? This regulation is rather important for the growth of the industry. This is exactly the, the question. I don't know. Is Okay. Uh, can I answer? Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. The minimum pasteurization capacity we offer is 500 liters per hour. Okay. So otherwise, it can be uh, it can be a different type of pasteurization. It can be a thermization, which occurs in a small cheese vat. Uh, it can be as low as 200 to 300 liters, and it, it can be a universal vat for pasteurization and also for the calculation of the milk. Okay. Can I can I say something? It's intended for low capacities. This question was from my side. Can yeah, I? Yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, this is basically for uh, Mr. Soel Salim about the past minimum pasteurization law in Pakistan. Pasteurization law. Mr. Salim. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I would like to comment on it that there is a committee working on it. Uh, the worthy vice chancellor, our teacher, is on board for this purpose. The secretary livestock has been working on it. The minister is interested. Now, right now, these uh, the committee members are working right now to I mean devise policy that from where to start with. Right? Previously, it was considered that we should st uh, start from the Sialkur side, and then it was considered that Lahore should be the first to start with. So we are right now working on it. We haven't finalized it. It hasn't been announced, but the committee is already working on it, and will uh, definitely be uh, will come up with a, soon. Will come up with a good, I mean, information and uh, good news for having a minimum pasteurization system for at least one city to start. With. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, another question. Exists in Pakistan. The Mediterranean buffalo race, and in this case, where and how many animals? Uh, the question is about. Uh, I can respond. Uh, the how many total heads of buffaloes uh, uh, in Pakistan? That's the way I understand. Uh, the total heads. Uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, but it's about uh, 39, 39 million heads. And, and this uh, uh, involves the adult animal, the young stock, the sucklers, the bulls, uh, uh, everything together. 
39 million heads all over the Pakistan as per the statistics of economic survey of Pakistan. Thank you. And the last question is, uh, we would like to know if regulation of working milk as raw materials are similar in Pakistan to the European one. Hello? I don't know, the regulation... Shazad yes. uh, Sh I would request Shazad Amin Saab to please respond. Um, okay, uh, you just, I just missed that. Uh, so can, can we have a question again, please? Yeah, uh, they would like to know if the regulation of um, the working mill as a raw material are similar uh, to the European one. So how are the regulations for raw materials? For um, raw milk? Yeah, as, as far as the regulation or regulatory bodies are concerned, uh, in terms of the raw material which are imported uh, for the value-added products or value-added uh, or, or for the uh, like skim milk or something like that, um, the, the regulator is the same. We do import from uh, uh, European markets. And uh, in terms of the end product delivery, they are all the same. So... Uh, yes, there are custom duty uh, starting anywhere from 5% all the up to 15%. But uh, in terms of the requirement of the uh, product, they are all the same. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if we don't have, uh, you know, more questions, we can go for conclusion remarks. I think that was, a, you know, very, you know, intensive, compact and, you know, a clear presentation about how how much you know Pakistan can offer for Italy and also for foreign investors and also the potential of this interesting sector in Pakistan. So I would like to give the floor now to Mrs. Emanuela Benini, the director of the Italian uh, Development Cooperation Agency in Pakistan. Um, as you know, this project that we have been you know working with UNIDO since uh, 2006 um, has been fully financed by the Italian De Development Cooperation Agency. Uh, so this is also, um, you know, for us a, an honor to have here also Emanuela Benigni, who will give us just, uh, you know, some, some words. And then at the end, also the ambassador of Pakistan. Hi, Emanuela, please, you have the floor. Yes, good afternoon, good afternoon to uh, the ex excellencies, good afternoon to, to ITPO, Diana Battaglia, that I eventually met, to Dino Fortunato, and uh, good afternoon, really, I am in Islamabad, to uh, the Professor Ahmed and uh, Dr. Amin and Dr. Salim. It was extremely interesting not only the format, but whatever contents were, uh, we, we, we could uh, really share with you. Thank you very much. So the Italian Development Corporation had uh, reopened the, the agency some uh, months ago in, uh, in Islamabad. And uh, the project that has, been, uh, um, that has been carried out by UNIDO with ITPO and uh, SMIDA is coming, uh, unfortunately, to a close after very many years. So what uh, the ambassador has announced, Ambassador Ferraris has announced at the beginning, is that uh, towards the end of his project, what we, we thought uh, that was really uh, extremely precious to, to, uh, to save is uh, all the, the interactions that have taken place. So the idea is to, uh, to uh, actually save on a portal all the, the relationship all the activities, all uh, the names of the different companies that have been participating with, of course, the, their, uh, whatever they have been trying to do together, but also to, to, to leave as a kind of uh, 
uh, let's say, demonstration list of what is available on both, uh, on both markets. So I think it is extremely important for all the, the sectors that have been uh, um, worked uh, in all those years. Uh, we are glad that dairy is uh, such an important, uh, uh, such, such an important sector. And for us as development cooperation in the framework of the SDGs, we are looking, of course, at the uh, income generation for a, a large number of uh, uh, qualified persons and certain your families, and also the nutritional aspects of it, which are extremely important for, for us. Uh, what is also going to be very important is after COVID, uh, the fact that, uh, let's say, the food security is extremely important to, let's say, restore in a way and to enhance. And uh, what is what seems to be so interesting in what you have been showing is, first of all, a kind of a holistic approach, then this strong, um, let's say, link that is also the case in Italy between um, institutions, academy, and the, the products association. And because the link with the territory is very important because over, of course, the economical and trade parties, <clears throat> sorry, very important, but it is also the link with the territory, with the people of, uh, with whatever has to deal with their habits or habits that can be enhanced. And uh, of course, in a in a country where the ingredients are so rich, where the recipes are so rich, it is a pity that uh, uh, malnutrition is not only uh, caused by poverty but also by other cultural kind of. Uh, situation. So I think that what we would like to, to do in this platform is, of course, that you and whoever is part of uh, each cluster would be definitely uh, on the, uh, let's say, uh, 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 would be registered and shown, but also other uh, aspects that are uh, helping linking whatever uh, is has been done in all those years and whatever is uh, also whatever are the priorities and the, let's say, uh, the, uh, also the challenges uh, that COVID has uh, untapped in a way or the other. So of course, uh, Pakistan has an extraordinary potential and uh, also the, uh, the, the part of bio-organic, uh, green-friendly, um, let's say, uh, production or processing is extremely important as well. And I think we, we are all there. The fact of opening up to some products like uh, ice cream is something that we have been doing in very many countries and help also uh, for, the, for the food production to be, to be let's say, uh, uh, processed and, um, and uh, sold in a, in a proper way. So we, we are really very, very happy to be able to, to do with UNIDO in the last, uh, in the last uh, let's say, months of, a, of uh, the uh, lifespan of this project to be able to, to of course, to, to establish this platform. And we will be also very much uh, listening, <coughs> uh, listening to your suggestions because we, we think that we, we are a participatory system and um, Nadino is going to take uh, care of this and uh, other people are also going to listen and we would like to, to establish this uh, Pakistan-Italy network that is going to take place into the framework of the Pakistan-Italy alumni network and we are uh, going to work towards that and uh, we hope in this way and also with the two embassies to keep alive uh, what has been the, the work done for such a long time and that it keeps uh, being, let's say, uh, on the move. And uh, of course, we are not going to have a, um, a very, a very strong technical assistance on that, but I'm sure that the, the system can work by itself and we will see if other projects, we have also Tibet projects for agricultural products, if it may also help this platform to uh, uh, to provide and I'm sure that the uh, whatever are the also uh, the, the different sectors that deal more with trade than development cooperation does I'm sure they will enter the future as well. So thank you very much. Very, really I was uh, impressed by the high quality of this webinar. Thank you very much for for each of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Manuela also uh, has been also 
an honor to, to us uh, for us to, to have you here also for the conclusion remark. So just uh, for the final conclusion, let's give us also the floor to uh, both ambassadors just for a quickly, uh, you know, uh, conclusion. So Mr. Ambassador Salim, you have the floor. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Uh, it has been such a pleasure to be part of this very productive discussion that we had today. Um, some very uh, relevant and comprehensive presentations, um, very active question and answers, and of course the, the remarks by my counterpart, the Italian ambassador in Islamabad, yourself, and of course, you know, like, um, this is Diana. I think everything fell into place for oh, an excellent uh, webinar. So I'm very happy that we were able to have that with your cooperation and, you know, like, we be a part of it. We are now in a new normal. This COVID, it's not going to go away. We all know that. We have to live with it for some time until a vaccine uh, or a comprehensive uh, medicine could be discovered. So we'll have to adapt to these times. We all know that the economic impact of this pandemic has been immense. But we'll have to work within that to ensure that our economic economies um, continue to run, the businesses continue to run, and the sectors which are crucially important for our positions, um, they are fully provided for in terms of funding and in terms of opportunities uh, for selling and buying and further investments. So it, it was in this context, this, this first webinar on daily and lifestyle, uh, livestock, which is a very important area, of course, of Indian agriculture uh, for sale. We are very sanguine to welcome Italian entrepreneurs to Pakistan later this year, perhaps end of this year, when the things are better than what we are, they are presently. And I'm very happy uh, to see that in Rome, life is getting back to normal uh, in other parts of Italy as well. Some other countries are not as lucky as we know, uh, in Pakistan and uh, other countries in South Asia or in South America, it's still the peak of the pandemic, but inshallah, as you say, you know, we will get to where you are presently here. I believe there is a lot of room for further bilateral cooperation between Pakistan and Italy in the area of dairy and livestock. Taking advantage of the presence of Ambassador um, Andreas Ferraris um, and Ms. Manuela Benini, I would also suggest that we should take dairy and lifestyle as an area of cooperation in our joint economic uh, commission, as I had proposed earlier in the day. Um, the governments are, of course, you know, like, it is always for the businessmen to interact between and amongst themselves and come up with new projects or investments or collaborations. The job of the governments is to facilitate that, to provide an enabling environment provide the required legal mechanisms in terms of um, you know, like the, the, the agreements in place, bilateral agreements. So um, we are very, uh, very keen to do that on our part. My uh, counterpart, the Italian ambassador, has, of course, you know, the, minister, the, the, the same level of keenness as well. Um, and that would be the reason that, you know, like we sort of take to the Joint Economic Commission, uh, that that would be helpful. Um, but in the end, it's all to the entrepreneurs themselves. And we see a lot of interest on both sides, in Italy and in Pakistan. And we are looking forward to the further development of this area. We're looking forward to the tapping of all those untapped opportunities that we see in Pakistan to be explored. Um, and um, inshallah, 
We are looking forward to very productive and continued interaction. Thank you. My special thanks in the end to Mrs. Diana um, Pitikakia. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. I'm still learning Italian. Uh, head of you know, Canada, ITPO in Italy, Mr. Dino Fortunato, of course, um, investment and promotion expert, um, the Italian ambassador, uh, whom I look forward to uh, very soon sort of meeting and when it's possible, and of course, uh, virtually and uh, personally, and everybody else who has participated in this very productive webinar today. Thank you. Ambassador, um, please, uh, Ambassador Ferrarese, if you just want to two words uh, to, to the audience, please. Hello. Yes, I completely agree with uh, my Pakistani counterpart in Italy, and uh, I encourage to continue with the activities because uh, many important issues have been raised. What I can say very shortly uh, to my uh, countrymen, come to Pakistan. It is a very friendly country, very friendly environment. You will be surprised to find such generals. And as, yeah, as I was impressed and uh, delightfully surprised after I there is a lot of things to do here, and uh, uh, there is an uh, objective. Uh, uh, Italian and Pakistani businessmen and each understand each other very well. On the other side, to our Pakistani counterparts, go to Italy, check what we can find and provide, which is better than anywhere. Uh, uh, we will establish a direct, uh, a, a easier way to get long term visas so that you can go to Italy more frequently and feel more free to travel. Uh, I'm introducing these long-term visas for businessmen uh, in a more extensive way. Uh, in the other side, please, you will find always in our embassy a point of reference, collaboration, take information, and uh, uh, please rely on that. Let me congratulate you for the organization. It was extremely useful. And uh, uh, best, my best uh, greetings to everybody. If, uh, if, uh, is the, yeah, which I have the honor to meet in Brazil, Samia's very useful initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you also to all participants who has been following us uh, during this morning. And I think we're, we have been more than 60 companies from Italy and Pakistan who follow with us, uh, you know, this morning in this webinar. And as uh, it was said and mentioned before, it was really, uh, you know, useful to understand the potential of Pakistan and for sure this is just one initiative more of many uh, others to come and so we hope to, to keep in touch with all the entrepreneurs in order to, to make that uh, you know the business and the investment really happen. So thank you again and we hope to see you uh, soon in, in the near future. Thank you again.